Well, hello, everybody. It's your boy, Avery, and welcome to another Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast episode, because I don't know what the hell to call this podcast. Now, I was going to do some Fallout New Vegas gameplay, but number one, I've beaten New Vegas for like the 10th time. Um, and number two, I just kind of wanted to sit down and talk and, and relax and, and just you talk one-on-one. -on -one. Because I feel like the channel has really been on a journey as of late, ever since I sort of quote unquote came back to YouTube a few months ago when, uh, you know, I had that update video and I talked about where I was at in life and being on medical leave for my full time job, no longer having any insurance, having more time to post videos, wanting to come back to YouTube posting daily. And ever since then, I've grown my channel past what it was when I had stopped you doing YouTube like daily for like the fifth or sixth time, which was I had posted on Capital G's channel and I think I had something like 767, 747 subscribers, something like that. And now we're nine away from 800. So smash the ever living crap out of that subscribe button and the like button so that we can get to 800 subscribers. We're so close and which means we're even closer to a thousand subs. And really to me, that is the end goal of this is to hit that 1000 subscriber mark. And yeah, I could probably get there quicker if I actually did interviews and deck profiles with players and things like that, but I really don't have those kind of connections. And really, between just trying to focus on growing my channel on my own with no real help, yes, I've had help in the past from people like MCO40 several years back, Capital G a couple of years ago, um, really, I'm doing everything solo. I'm building my business, so to speak, on my own. And am I ever gonna get to 100,000 subscribers? Not unless I suddenly start growing like crazy. And I don't expect to get to that, I don't. You know, I, I expect myself to kind of cap out at 1,000 subs and ride that out and we'll continue to grow the channel. Um, and I think too, at, as a mental health stimulant, I think for lack of a better term, it's been good for me to be able to do this because one, it keeps my editing skills up even though I'm on medical leave from my full-time job, which was an associate producer and editor uh, at a news station working in the news world, which as I've talked about before, I'm sure people are gonna be like, oh, fake news, um, which is funny because really the news station I worked at wasn't fake news. Um, but I think the toughest part has been that I'm on medical leave. I don't have medical insurance. I'm still on my parents until I'm 26, but I'm going to be 26 come October. And I think really, especially in the past few days, it's really been a struggle with just trying to figure out what I'm going to do. What is the next step? Because in case you haven't seen the other podcast episodes, uh, I ended up going back to the part-time job that I worked before I went into the news world, so to speak. So I'm back at a place that I never thought I'd go back to. And I fucking hate it. I despise it. The money's better than what I was making at my full-time job. But is it really worth it if you hate what you fucking do? And, like, the the job itself, like, the work, in a sense, like, it is, is good work. Like, it's honest work. I'm, I'm a pharmacy technician. Like, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's very complicated, intense work, which is why I'm tired as fuck and I'm making a podcast episode. Um... But it's it's not where I want to be. And it, I relate that to the channel in a sense because I, I don't want to just stop at 800 or even 1,000 subscribers, even 2,000 subscribers. I want to be a big channel. To me, a big channel is like 10,000 plus subscribers. Like that's a big channel. And I'm sure I'll get there one day. I'm sure that I will. Um, it's just going to take time. And it's... It's just a really weird time, and I wish that I wish that I, I could I could change things like just instantly, like Thanos with you know the Infinity Gauntlet, just snap my fingers and and change everything. But similar to Yu Gi Oh, you have to grind things out if you want things to change and get better. You know, I can't just wake up tomorrow and think that life is going to be a bed of roses and that the things that I want to change are going to suddenly change. I have to put in the work myself. If you're playing a deck like Splite 
ABC, Tear Elements, Therions, Punk, Branded, like whatever, the list goes on. Chainburn, for those of y'all who want to be playing Chainburn. Like, you have to put in the time. You got to put in that grind. You know, I didn't get my three regional invites, even though they're not really tops, even though I call them tops, but my three regional invites, I didn't get them because I just woke up the day before the regional and like play tested a little bit and then went to the regional the next day and just taught. No, when I played Cosmo, I net decked a build that had topped a regional like two weeks prior to my regional, play tested it, learned how to play it. It was one of the best decks at the time. And I came in top 32 because of it with, uh, what was the other deck I topped with? I topped with uh, a Trickstar, like 18th place or something. No one knew what my deck did. It was near the end of the tier zero Zodiac format before we got a new ban list. People didn't know what my shit did. And I learned the deck and I learned my matchups and I did well because of it. 60 card branded Eldritch. I copied the build that was in Europe and I did well because of it because people did not know what my shit did and they misplayed not knowing that they misplayed because of it. And so in a similar way, if you want your life to change in a positive manner, you can't just go through life just sort of, you know, driving in neutral. Like, you have to actively make those changes. And that's something that I have to push through my my mental uh, caution tape, so to speak, and get myself there. You know, one of the things I haven't really talked about is kind of honestly how therapeutic it is to do things like shitting on Master Duel, aka Master Shits, because... I, I look at the game and it just, it pisses me off that the devs think that it's a good product when it's a bucket of shit, you know, similar to something like Cyberpunk 2077. And it, it reminds me of like how people have stepped on me in my life and how they've tried to sweep things under me as if I'm some sort of fucking rug. And you don't ever want to be that because I've been that way too often in my life. Even with when I first started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively, there were players that would want to step on me like I was a rug. One particular player comes to mind that we're not going to name in this video, uh, but shout out to my homie Greg, and if any of my Jacksonville friends know who Greg is and know who he used to associate himself with with a particular person, then you know who the fuck that is. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll call him by his nickname, Biscuits. And if you know who Biscuits is, and if you're in Jacksonville, you know who I'm talking about. And he was a fucking asshole. He was a piece of shit. And he was one of those players that literally he embodied the toxic Yu-Gi-Oh player. Like, he was the dictionary textbook definition of what a toxic Yu-Gi-Oh player is. And it turns out, I found out years later that he was jealous of me. And yet, I was younger than him. And he was pissed. He was jealous of me because he thought I was going to take attention from... Uh, someone who I was also friends with that he was friends with and it's like bro like you're you're gonna you're gonna get pissed at a kid who's like two years younger than you thinking that I'm gonna take attention away from your friend like you got fucking mental issues dude <laughs> like honestly and now he plays magic and he's probably like a fucking asshole in that game too but you know what I pushed through it I grinded through it I got bullied in school I pushed through it I grinded through it I proved those assholes wrong and I'm living my best life. I'm doing what I want to do. Like, I, I didn't think at 25 that I would have a lot going for me in life. You know, yeah, I've got VHL. Yeah, I've got this rare cancer. But, man, the trade-off doesn't suck. Like, I still have my hair. I, I drive a 500 horsepower sports car. I have a gaming PC. I have a Switch. I have a Nintendo Switch, not like a knife. <laughs> I have a Xbox Series X. I have a PS5. I have a ball, a big ball. I got to go to New York. I got to travel. I've gone on cruises. I've done all of these things. And I also have three invites to my name. And I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! for as long as I can remember. And I think that that's the takeaway from this. That, yeah... Life is tough for a lot of people, some more than others, and I wouldn't wish my cancer situation on anybody. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, even the asshole that I used to work with at my full-time job, who turn, turns out he used to be an alcoholic, allegedly. And that fucking asshole one day said to me, I have very serious questions about your future here. Well, now the homeboy is gone. He doesn't have a job anymore, and yet here I am sitting on medical leave.
And who knows, maybe I'll come back. Maybe they'll let me go. Maybe I'll find another job at a different news station, or maybe I'll go and find a different radio station to go to. But what matters is, fuck that guy. Because just like all the other people who've tried to fuck with your boy, I've outlasted every single one of those motherfuckers. And you can outlast the motherfuckers in your life too. Whether you think it's been going on for too long, whether you think it's never going to end, it's about outlasting them so that you can win the game of life. You know, how is it that you win in Yu-Gi-Oh? You outlast them. Sometimes it's about the resource game. Sometimes it's about beating them into the dirt. Turn one by making a big ass board and dropping a dookie on the field and your opponent opens booty booty butt cheeks. Other times it's about stalling them out, outbidding them in the resource game. That's how I won a lot of my games with Ella Lich Brandon. Just sat on a mystic mine and had more resources than, than them. Like, it just happens. Ow, hit my fucking desk. <laughs> so, guys, thank you for all the support. I really appreciate you watching this video. I know that this really isn't going to be for everybody, but if you made it to the end of the video, let me know with a comment. Let me know what you think about all this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.